It's been a dark week after the passing on of one of the former players, one of the greatest that has ever played for KCCA, that is Peter Wandete, and also one year that we mark this week since the passing on of one of another legend, uh, Mr. Jimmy Chirunda. Some of the positives from the week are uh, KCCFC picking a nil-nil draw against Express Football Club in the first leg of the Stanbic Uganda Cup. We have the highlights, the reactions from the manager, Mole Biekwaso, and the fans' expectations ahead of the second leg. Plus a special guest on the show, guys, tonight. It's season two, episode 25 of the KCCFC TV show. My name is Magero Moses Mwanje. Let's walk this journey together. Now to start it off with everything, KCCFC this week, we lost one of the greats, uh, that is one of the greatest football players that has ever played for KCCA in the 70s, in the 80s, that is the late Peter Wandete or the late Peter Rogers Wandete passed on this week, that was on the 24th of uh, uh, May uh, 2021. And um, he was laid to rest in Bali and um, it, it, it was really a very sad week for, the, for KCCFC because this is one of the players that played for KCCFC in the 70s, one with the club that was, uh, if you remember that, uh, Sekafa in, in, in um, the first Sekafa Clubs Cup that KCCFC won. And also in the 80s, won so much for the football club. Uh, most of uh, the, the people that were able to watch KCCFC play then uh, commonly knew him for, for the famous word that is Umwa Kali. Uh, we'll get to know why exactly they knew him for that. But also, uh, it's also another week where KCCFC made one year since the passing on of one of the legends and one of the greats of the football club in Jimmy Chirunda. He passed on last year on the 25th of May. And this year, uh, that was 25th of May, he made one year since he passed on two greats, uh, one uh, dying a day before one was making a year since he passed on. So we only say at the KCCFC that we um, may the souls of the faithfully departed rest in eternal peace. Now still about KCCFC, the club news. This week we had three players summoned for the senior national team, that is the senior national team football uh, team, that uh, is Charles Sukwago, the captain of KCCFC, summoned uh, ahead of that game against the Bafana Bafana that will be happening in June. Another player, a teenager, Steven Serada, part of that AFCON under 20 team for uh, Uganda, in that's the Uganda Hippos, uh, someone for the very first time on the senior Uganda Cranes team. And also the other player is Brighton Nukani, who has been part of uh, that crane setup uh, since uh, Jonathan McKinstry came in, to, uh, came in, to, uh, in charge, that is in terms of the Uganda crane. So uh, congratulations to the three, Anukani, Serada, and Charles Rukwago, the captain of the football club. And we wish you the very best. Please fly the flag of KCCFC and Uganda cranes highest now away from the club news that is in terms of kccfc this week we played the first leg of the 47th edition of the stand big uganda cup and express football club hosted kccfc that game was at the betway mutesa 2 stadium in wankrukuku uh, definitely before the game all the numbers were in favor of kccfc because uh we showed you the head-to-head -head last week on the kccfc tv show and you got to see that kccfc had an upper hand uh, in terms of uh, the first leg against Express Football Club, but then Express Football Club were the informed team. Uh, it's, it's worth bearing in mind that they are topping the, stand, uh, the Star Times Uganda Premier League. That is uh, the team on top of the table. And uh, going into this one, uh, we also told you that there are some players that had played for both teams, uh, that is KCCFC and Express Football Club before. Now we have uh, a player that is in Express Football Club in Mozamiri Mutiaba. He did not feature in this one, but he has played for uh, KCCFC before. We have John Revita in, X, uh, in KCCFC. Uh, he played for Express Football Club, but he did not feature for KCCFC on the day, but he has played for Express Football Club before. So there was so much uh, in terms of the build-up ahead of this one. The manager coming out to say that KCCFC needed this one, and also the players last week. So the game kicked off. That was on Wednesday at uh, Betway Mutesa 2 Stadium, Mulankulukuku. KCCFC going for a 5 4 1. And uh, the five players, that means we had three players in the back line uh, in Musa Ramadan, uh, Peter Magambo, and Dennis Iguma. And then the guys playing as the wing backs were Musa Nahasan and Ali Moses. Then in midfield, we had Gift Ali playing with uh, Achai Habat, Mugume Ashraf, and Steven Serada playing just behind the lone striker on the day, who was uh, Charles Ruanga. So KCCFC had 
a couple of chances in the first half, but then Express Football Club had answers to all the questions asked, just like it was for KCCFC, because Express Football Club asked a couple of questions, but then uh, the KCCFC backline had all the answers. And then the first half ended nil-nil. Second half, a couple of changes were made, introducing some of the players that were on the bench, that is in Kezron, Chizito, uh, Juma Valinya coming on as substitutes. Later on in the game, we had Juma Asan also come on as a substitute and also just before the game was about to end. In the last three minutes, Brighton Nukani came on as a substitute in that one for KCCFC. The game ending nil-nil, that is um, for the first leg of the San Bikiona Cup and that means that in the second leg, KCCFC will have to pick up a win if they have to progress to the next round. A, a, a draw with any goals, that is 1-1, 2-2, 3-3 or any, I mean... Uh, that Express Football Club will have to progress to the semi-finals because they will have scored a goal at the MTN Omondi Stadium. So that was all about the first leg of the start Sandbik Uganda Cup at the Betway Mutesa 2 Stadium. So we have the reactions from the manager of KCCFC, Mr. Molly Bekwaso, after this game. And this is what he had to say after that nil-nil draw at Wanklukuku. So, um, John Revita. Why Revita to one of your combo stands? They had a second day right to finish a chance to present a good deal. Okay, coach, congratulations for the one point. Guys, you've heard it from the manager, KCCFC, Mr. Mole Biyokwa. So coming out to say that a nil-nil draw at Wankuluku is a little bit tricky for KCCFC because anything that has a draw with goals at Lugogo will mean that Express Football Club progress and that means KCCFC have only got one thing to do win that game or if not have a nil nil draw again and then have the game go to penalties where no one knows what happens in penalties because it's it's a probability uh, it's a half so it can go either way so guys we're going to be going to a break when we return we have a guest on the show will be walking us down memory lane about everything in terms of the late Peter Rogers one day we'll have him also stay around and break down that game between KCCFC and Express Football Club next week in the Stan Bikiwana Cup at the MTN Omondi Stadium. Don't move away. Now, welcome back from that break. I told you we have a guest for this week's show. It's been a while since we had someone on the show as a guest. Uh, I think <laughs> it must have been about six, seven shows. But this, we have a, a guest on this week's show, and then he'll be telling us everything in terms of... Uh, uh, the, the, the great that passed on this week, Mr. Peter Wanjeti, the late. Uh, this is one person who has watched KCCFC. Let's stay, let's say from the 70s. Uh, he's been uh, a fan of the football club from its worst, and up to now, he's still a fan of the football club. We'll have him introduce himself and then we take it on from there, sir. Uh, thank you, Moses. Um, glad to be here. My name is Tom Damlida. And uh, I would say that I've been a KCC fan since uh, I was, uh, I went to the stadium when I was around six years of age. And uh, since then, I've been a KCC fan. And uh, we've gone through, I, I saw the KCC in the best times. I've watched KCC in the, in the worst times. And uh, I would say that uh, the current fan can really feel happy about KCC because there were, really, there were times when we were really bad and we went through very bad patches. Wow. Um, well, you've heard it from him. He says he, he has been a club fan from the worst times, seen the good times. And even up to now, he's still a KCCFC fan. Probably, could you share with us some of the great memories 
and maybe the, your worst and greatest memories as a fan of the <laughs> uh, Moses, my best memories, I would say, were when I saw KCC, when I went to KCC's first victory party for the 19, as a young boy, for the 19... 70, 78, 77, 70, that 77, 78 group. Okay. Um, I was a young boy, taken by my brother, but uh, I mean, these are things that they had talked about. They had prepared me to go through as a fan. My elder brothers had prepared me. I mean, they had showed me the KCC was the greatest club. And one of the best moments was when you realized that most of the players who were at KCC at the time, went into the national team and played at the 1978 Africa Cup of Nations. So it was monumental in a way that you would, you would listen to radio, hear these players, and I had seen them personally. So that was the best moment. Those were some of the moments for me. But um, I would say that uh, my biggest expectations would have been the 1983 season. For me, that's the best, and, 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 and I was stuck there. I, I remain a KCC fan, but for me, I would seek there. Because that's the, the year we had the best shot at the continental football. In my opinion, that's the best squad KCC has ever assembled. Because mm. that year, they played Arab contractors in the Cup Winners' Cup. Arab contractors, I would say, currently, by, the, by, by continental football, maybe I, don't, I can't compare them with any of the... Because they, they bought the best players. They had the best players on the continent. You had players who had been... Some of the best at the Nations Cup in 1978, like Mohamed Ramaz, I mean, Abdul Razak, the best midfielder at the Nations Cup 78, mm. the Ghanaian captain. He was Arab contractors. Joseph Anthony Bell, the goalkeeper, was at Arab contractors. So we faced them in Cairo. The game ended 2 2. I would like to thank Mister, because what they did, they carried the recording for that game and it was played most, in most places around Kampala. So we watched the game before the second leg. So the second leg, because the, the first leg ended 2 2 all. The second leg, we took a 2 0 lead. Unfortunately, we lost the game in the penalties because they came back and scored two goals. So, but uh, for me, that was the best season. That season, we lost only one game. Uh, by the time we were champions, we lost the second game after we declared champions. Mm -hmm. So, for me, twice we beat Express. First round, 5 1, it was. I mean, I grew up being told that Express were our main enemy. Mm -hmm. So, seeing KCC score 5 past Express was big for me. Then the second round, we beat them 3-1. I mean, for me, that was my best season. But I wouldn't say that we had no good seasons much later. My worst game as a KCC fan, I almost lost my life, was a day before Easter, 1988. Mm. We played a club called Kalamo FC from Congo in the, in the Cup Winners' Cup. I walked into Lugogo two days to that game. We had only five fit players. The rest were sick. Okay. Um, uh, we could not, I mean, I mean, what happened is that generation that the senior players had left that very year, because Tom Wang had left, Philip Mond had left, Wandiete had left, Fred Mugish had left. So we were building a new side, the likes of Jackson Mayanja, George Nsimbe, Charles Senyange. So we play Kalam in the Continental game, and we lost that game, 1-0 in Nakivubo. Um, I walked to the, by then the Uganda Transport Company bus service, just across, because Nakivubo used to open to that, that side of uh, Nakivubo Mews, this, that street. Mm -hmm. So I'd walk through from the stadium, walk into UTC and board the bus home. I boarded the bus, went back to Makinde, we stayed there, my, my, my home is in Makinde, around Madidisa. I walked from home, I walked from the bus, got home got into my bed and I was still with, with my parents and my elder sister. I, 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 I think I fainted and um, they had to take me to, 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 I had to go through treatment. Okay. So my family did not, didn't have enough, a good Easter 1988. Mm -hmm. So it's only I think around Easter Monday that I saw people I had um, candle all over me and said, what happened? So, I mean, for me, that was my worst. And uh, from then on, obviously, naturally, as a fan, I began appreciating the game in its entirety. And for me, that was my worst, that was my worst moment. Mm. But we, like I've said, Moses, we had so many bad moments as a club. Wow.
Very interesting memories, I should say, Tom. Uh, been a very, um, been a dark week for the football club uh, this past week, where we lost one of the players that you've just mentioned, uh, who was part of that group, the 70s and the 80s for the football club. It's also worth bearing in mind that uh, in 78, that's when we won our first Sekafa Club's Cup, yeah. and uh, you should have really had very good memories. So, yes. um, the late Peter Wandiete, or the late Peter Rogers Wandiete, um, you are part of the uh, people or the fans that have watched um, this guy uh, play football. Probably some of the memories, what can you probably say about uh, the late Peter Rogers Wandiete? Um, in one sentence, for me, he was Mr. KCC. Um, what, what I can say is that uh, Peter came to the club because I, by the time I, I began really understanding the club, I found Peter at the club. And uh, one of the things he had is that he would stand out. He was a rugged, I would say, a rugged player. I would say in the modern game, I don't think we still have so many of those players in, in the league, but uh, currently in the league. But I would say a Dennis Okot, of, of the generation that has been at KCC recently, the Dennis Okot. We've had such players who really worked for the club. I can give so many examples. You had uh, a player like Moses Mohinda at one time, you had a player like Auskaya, mm -hmm. uh, you had a player like his other teammate coach, Charles Katumba. I mean, these were players who died little for the club. I mean, what happened with Peter is that he would stand out. The game then was so much into center forward scoring goals and peter was your typical man marker the rules of the game then gave such players a chance to to do their work their things sometimes a little dirty but that was peter for you if you wanted to man mark a center forward a prolific center forward from the opposition out of the game peter did that with perfection wow. one thing he had is that he had the agility he would head the ball because the game then was played more into, I mean, there was so much crossing. So he, Peter would head the ball all week. In fact, if you see him, he had a scar on his on the front of his face. True, true, yeah. And that scar was as a, result of, as a result of a cut because he would head the ball all evening. He would do a sliding tackle. So, and those were the attributes of a typical man marker of that generation. So Peter had that. But the good thing about KCC is that KCC was a more playing side. So in games where they needed him to, they needed to play, mm. Peter was often dropped. But in games where the opposition had a player to a center forward to man mark out of the game, Peter was the man. But because he played with so with so many players who were so many so much technically gifted, mm. they tried to encourage him to play the game. Mm. And surprisingly, Peter improved and could even play ahead of the two center forwards into what we used to call the holding number six. Wow. He used to, he moved into that. And, and as, 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 the, as he grew into the club, he did that. So for me, that was Peter for you. What happened with Peter is that he's one of the guys who would stay in, around town. For example, he would run his errands around town. So 30 minutes to, to, to training. He's around Kampa Road or that. He would not wait for a bus. He would just put in his sneakers and jog to Rukogo. So that was Peter for you. He stayed at the club, loved it, gave it his all. Even when, after playing, because after Peter playing for KCC, him with his friend Fred Mugisha moved to Bell FC and they became player managers. But they loved, surprisingly, Peter was a rugged player who loved to play the good game. So after three or four years, they came back from Bell to manage KCC. And that's how they won the the Uganda Cup in 1983 with Fred Mugisha coach. So for me, I would say that Peter embodied everything that you would need from a player who is not very technically gifted, but surrounded with almost everybody technically gifted, but fitted in. Interesting stuff, uh, Mr. Tom. Uh, you've mentioned something very important that to you, uh, you'd compare him to the former captain who is uh, Dennis Okot. But then if um, there's a lot of stuff that can be said about Tom, I mean, sorry, about Peter. Um, if you were to, uh, I mean, pass on some message to the current generation, to the current players, what are some of the things they can pick from players like the late Peter Wangete and also that group of that generation? There was not that much money in football then, but those guys were able to play, I mean, top football and at the top level. 
what can the current generation pick from that crop? Um, one of the, one of the, um, I mean, Moses, I would like to, to, to share this with you that sometimes we, we, the generations are different. Back then, back then, it was not common for people to leave their parents' homes and, 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 and go and live, and, and live alone. So you would even play for the biggest club like KCC. But as long as you're 22, 23, you would start your parents' place. So the demands on those players, honestly, were less. But in terms of the, the thinking, I would say that Peter was one of those players who gave his whole... I mean, even when you're limited, as long as you put your heart and soul into it, you can make it. Over time, we have seen players who have gotten this opportunity to play at the biggest clubs. But because they think that they have arrived, they put their, their hands down. I'm going to give you another example with Peter. When, Fred, when, when uh, Peter came to KCC as an understudy, the class of, uh, of Jimmy Kirunda and Tom Ruanga, I can only compare Jimmy and, and Tom and, 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 and I have lots of respect, honestly, for Ibra. But maybe anybody who just comes close to them is Ibra Sekanja. None of the other players we have in the country comes close to those two. Smart, clean, technically gifted. But Wanjete comes in and finds those two players play. So he had to wait. So the two go, to, go into semi-professional football. Because he was a little bit rugged, then KCC says, no, we cannot promote him. Then they went and got Rashid Modin, from UCB was much younger. They get Kabaireho, who was another smart player, and they leave Peter at the club. Yeah. He waited. There were so many opportunities elsewhere. Peter having grown up in Bali, because at the time the league, there were so many clubs that were willing to take him. But he waited. So now, at the time, even the other two left. That's when Peter realizes that now I'm at the club. He waited until his opportunity came, and he took it with both hands. So for me, as long as a club is willing to keep a player, the only thing the player, the player has got to do is to continue working hard. Finally, you will get to where uh, you, 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 your, your, your talents can take you. But as long as people begin quitting very early, that has been a very big undoing. Uh, Moses, my experience bringing that into professional football currently we are playing, playing and, and looking at what our Ugandan players have gone through, especially in the developed world. I mean, in the, in the, in the semi-professional, professional football elsewhere. Quitting quitting in the heart has been their undoing and as long as they can do it with that so for me they can achieve everything wow well that's uh tom damlia for you are uh, giving a very good um i mean a detailed breakdown of exactly who peter wandete was uh the late peter wandete passed on this week uh, and uh, he was buried in bali and he mentioned something very important for the current crop of players that hard work uh, will get you everywhere you want. I mean, you just have got to work hard. Different um, surroundings from exactly what used to happen then and what is happening right now, but you mentioned something that is very key. Without hard work, you may not be able to get to probably your greatest heights. We still have Tom Dummy on the show tonight, guys, because we're going to be back with him in the next segment. We're we'll breaking down that game between KCCFC and Express Football Club in the Stanbic Uganda Cup. He's also here to tell us who his greatest KCCFC player is. Don't move away. Now welcome back from that break. We still have Tom Dummy on the show. He's our guest for this week's show and it's a little bit different this time around. Normally our guests do one segment and then they leave. We have him for both segments. And we're going to be breaking down the return leg game, the quarterfinals between KCCFC and Express Football Club. It will happen this week on Friday, the 4th of June. And that game will be at the MTA Romondi Stadium. There's no better person to tell us about uh, the magnitude of this game because he's been able to watch different generations of KCCFC uh, teams. But first, to give you uh, some of the team news in going into this one, uh, we had some players that missed uh, the, the first leg of the game uh, because of injuries. Players like Sam Senyonjo and Sadata Naku. The players are expected back this coming week, uh, that is in terms of training, and then it will depend to the manager of the football club if they'll be ready. Uh, to play this game. Then we also have players like Phil Batobenchan who we do not expect in this one because he's still out injured. His return date is not known. And then Brian Ahewa who we don't expect to kick a ball again this whole season because of the kind of injury he picked up in the first round when KCCFC was playing Wakiso Giants. And um, the rest of the players are available for this one and uh, pretty much the team that played away 
to Express Football Club in that nil-nil uh, draw at the Mutesa 2 Stadium in Wankluku. But uh, just like we saw it last week, all the numbers were in favor of KCCFC when it comes to uh, the Stanbury Uganda Cup and also the times uh, both clubs have played each other. And also it's worth bearing in mind that both of these clubs, that is KCCFC and Express Football Club, are the record cup winners. That is for the Stanbury Uganda Cup. Both clubs stayed at 10 and uh, the next club there is SC Villa at 9. So that means both clubs want to progress to the semi-finals. You can only have one progressing. And that means whoever progresses to the semi-finals has a chance probably to get the 11th Stanley Uganda Cup title. So that's pretty much the club news ahead of this one. We've told you that Sadata Nako and Sam Senjunjo, they highlight the players that we expect to return uh, in the squad of KCCFC ahead of that game on Friday at the MTN Omondi Stadium. So Tom, speaking about this one, um, KCCFC went to Uankulukuku last week and uh, picked up, it was on Wednesday, and picked up a nil-nil draw. Uh, what kind of position is KCCFC in heading into the, uh, this one? Probably someone could be excited that, yes, we picked up a nil-nil draw against a, a team like Express that is on form, but probably as a person that has been in football for long, when you look into this game, your take, please. Uh, thank you, Moses. Um, I did follow the game. I watched the game, uh, by the way, on, 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 on TV. And I can say that uh, it's one, it was one of those days. Um, for any KCC fan who has been around a little longer, I'll tell you that Wankuluk has never been one of our, in fact, if, if, if I'm not mistaken, it's one of our worst places. We rarely win games at Wankuluk. And uh, so I looked at this game and I said, maybe, maybe that's, that's a, draw, a draw would be a fair result. But in, in, in home and away ties that have got aggregate on them, a nil nil draw is, is, is almost, it rarely favors, favors any of the teams. Because uh, Express scores that goal and then you have scored twice because now they have the home, I mean, they are, they are, they are, away, they are, they are away goal. So for me, it's, it's, it's one of those, those tricky situations. But going into, into, into the game itself, Moses, you are well aware that uh, the informed team was Express. Yeah. They are, they, are po they are poised probably to win the, 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 the UPL this year. I'm not saying they're going to, they have won it, but uh, maybe they're, I mean, they're, they're, they're in the driving seat. I mean, yeah. it's, it's in their hands now. Yeah. But uh, going into the history of our, of our comp the, that competition, us and Express, I still think they have an edge over us. I can pick off head a couple of games where they are, even in the, even their worst times, mm. they have knocked us out of the, of, of the cup. Yeah. Um, there was uh, I also remember one where we 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 we, 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 to, we, we took a lead. The chaos of the of, of the football that was in the stadium, they 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 they, they, they the game was uh, abandoned. Mm. So we were, we were in the lead. They came back to I mean beat us. I can go back to the 1985 final. We were a very strong side at the time. They were not the strongest. We were better than them. I mean, they beat us 3-1 on a rainy Soge Beach in Nachivubo. Then there's a, the Uganda Cup final, 1997. I mean, uh, we had everything. I mean, uh, they brought on Ayumbo, scores a, a bum brand was the ball at the back of the net, and then, we, we, I mean, they win the Uganda Cup. But uh, going into this game, my thinking is that um, if we can get goals early in this game, I would think that the possessive nature of our game can take can keep us in good stead. But uh, the way I've, 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 I've the way I've seen Express play this season is that they, they, they are a very very difficult side. I mean, they, they are they are the kind of side that's going to torment you. I mean, throw the ball into that box, and uh, they, 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 Eric Campbell, motivated by being someone to the Uganda Cranes team. I think he's, he's one of the other opposition players that you will look at and say maybe maybe we just have to, to keep a, a close eye. I mean, Molly will have to tell his boys to keep a, a close eye on him. And uh, their last game, remember, the other game they had at Lugogo last season when they're really limping. The game, remember, when one, Lugogo, one. Go, one one. I mean, I mean, in a game where you felt that we're not. I mean, they were, they were non-starters coming to the game. I mean, I mean, then uh, you have. Um, I think Musa Ramadan was sent off. Yeah, after handball. After handball, and Lukwago had messed up. The I mean, moment. The yeah. moment, yeah. and uh, and uh, and you have the thinking that there's that. I mean, for me, from a fan's perspective, I, I mean. There are so many moments I can pick up back to Express. Maybe because, like I told you, I grew up in that kind of environment. But for me, uh, the rival is Express. But uh, going into, like I've said, going into that final, you, you just have you just have to keep our fingers crossed that uh, we, we knock them out. It will be a bad season because we've been used to, to winning a trophy at least 
every season over the last six, five, six seasons. Yeah. So it will really be a difficult season for us. Knocked out of the continent, controversial in my opinion. Uh, because I think that we would have gone through, you remember that, the, the, the tie against the COVID, the and, COVID all the things, tie, yeah. the, and, and what has come later, because we were the first, the earlier victims. True. But what has come a little bit later and what many African clubs have been doing, I think that maybe that's, we, we, we suffered that fate. But going through this season, I mean, the departure of Mike, you, you, you can't shy away from that. I mean, his, uh, his case is still through and through. You may have, his you may have your shortcomings with him. Oh. So now you have a feeling that Mole gets through here and tries to win a trophy in his first season. Mm. And that cements, because for him, he's also cases through and through. Yeah. So you have the feeling that he wins his first trophy, God willing, and then that cements his status mm. as a coach. And maybe from there on, we can build on that. You've mentioned uh, Molly and Mike being uh, KCCFC through and through, and also something important that KCCFC need to pick uh, early goals in this one. Uh, and I think it's quite important to note that Sam Senyonjo and yes. uh, Sadat Anaku uh, will resume training. That is this week. They picked up injuries against uh, when we were playing UPDF in the Uganda mm -hmm. Premier League, mm -hmm. but they will be available this one. But then um, I think it's also worth uh, noting that KCCFC had really managed the game well because you, we played an express team away. And uh, that game ended nearly. But for me, everyone, all the odds were against KCCFC, I should exactly. say. But then you also you said you watched the game. I'll also mention that in case KCCFC do not get those early goals, do you think um, uh, Express having more experienced players compared to KCCFC, yes. do you think this will also probably get to affect the club later on in the game? And also the fact that Molly Bekwas is making sure he gets his first silverware in charge of the football club. Do you think this will also try to motivate him plus the players? Yeah, you, you, yeah, Moses, no doubt about it. You can try to get motiv to get, that can try to motivate him. But uh, like you said, experts are the experts are the most senior player, have the most senior um, squad. And uh, even this lack of fans, somehow there's something it takes away. Because you see the fans rallying behind you. Obviously, naturally, when you are at home, you have more fans in there, but this is not going, that advantage is not there. I mean, and and I have one and I have one one issue I would like to say is that any KCC fan, honestly, who has been around a little longer, will tell you we just don't like to get into sport kicks. Yeah. I mean, we are not very good at, at winning so many so many so many games. I mean, there are not many ties that we have won going into sport kicks. So 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 you have a feeling that you want KCC to get there and and get the lead and try to hang on to it than trying to chase a game against a more senior side than, than like Express, than know how to kill the time, I mean, to kill the clock. I've seen them try to kill the clock, especially when they're playing against fellow big sides where they've got a result this year. So for me, if it were possible, KCC would just look for that goal and hang on. I would, I would, I would prefer that approach than maybe try to, to, to take the game a little bit late. Wow, uh, KCCFC need to win this one because a goal, uh, a draw, with any goals in it, mean Express Football Club advance to the next round, that is the semi-final. A nil-nil draw means both clubs go into penalties. And um, I mean, just like I said, KCCFC just need to win this one at home at the MT Nomondi Stadium. It's a second uh, leg of the quarterfinals in Stanbic Uganda Cup. And also it's worth noting that Julius Poloto is also one of the players that will miss his tie. He picked up a hamstring injury in uh, the training sessions before we played Express Football Club, so we will not feature in this one. So we have the fans of KCCFC giving their take, their predictions, and also their expectations ahead of the second leg against Express Football Club. Here are the fans. Amanya Gange, Nzechamba De Joseph, Omoagizu wa Ste Kanso, Ngamviri De Machi Indie. Amanya Gange, Nzenku wa Shafik, Stiga, Umwagizu wa KCC okuva emutungo. Uh, return leg, ya wike ja, insu vila tugeenda kuitamu. Kufange ilachi ya katuteke dua kuitamu. Because uh, if we have a, a, a point away from home, na tugeenda batu za njira waka, I believe we are going to be more offensive, nga turumba nyo. Mm, tugeenda itamu. If we change some, some few, some few parameters at the pitch, tulina kuitamu. Because last game we had to be a, a bit back. Tetuwe gula onyo. Because tuli awe ate tetuwe taga conceding to deny bad result ye waka. Ne, this is the last match. It is the final game. So we have to come all. If we attack well, we know we can pass through the, this stage. Uh, coach, 
singa ba tutadde ne tulumba eh because we have these players which are very, very lustrous eh the likes of Poloto, the likes of Chigozi, uh, even though we play this Bukenya Kiza, that will be too good. Eh? In Titurumbe, we get a result. I am so anxious for the results because I know what it means to play X place here at Lugogo. So I, I, I actually think we, we, we have to do better. We have to do better in attacking, mainly Kubanga. Uh, the way we were attacking this time, we only came for a result which we actually got. So to, uh, to, uh, to get more efforts to show that we need the game, we need to kill the game, we need to score goals then. So prior to Funyemo was the only striking for CFA, uh, the fact that we are missing a lot of players and uh, the fact that uh, formation near Fea did that that uh, penetration that we needed for a team. To us settling up for a draw, I think the team had that in mind uh, so that they can fight for the return leg. So. Tuli uh tu tuli bete gefu, fengaba wagizi for the return leg and I'm I'm hoping for the best return leg. And so we don't quit anger the fact that Mpuli da Ibia Serada about his abs absence in the return leg and more. And so we da Awana Abasamba I think Juma Balinya would actually have a good one to start with, Obane we tunafuna K zero one to come and link up the team because it's what we most we miss the most mo mo first leg. No wasn't in Abavuka Bali ready for this and I think uh we are looking forward for a great win this time and we see ourselves to the next stage. Wemba wa kulonda team line up Jenandi Somye. Lukwago as usual, Mugoro, Eri, right back, Alirabade very superb for the last three games. I will maintain him. Musa to Musana is gaining the confidence. Maintain him too. Mumakati wanu aga central back, Magambo. Uh, is the most improved player at the pitch right now. Muzanyi Saburunji Nyo together with Iguma with the experience. Uh, then Mumakati, Giftali of course, Abai no Zanya, uh, Kubene Kezironi because we saw when Kezironi was brought on in this previous match, Abada Samba, Abada at Kwataburunji Nyo Mupira taking it to the forward. Uh, unlike these ones, we just possess and do what. So I will play K0 together with Gift and uh, Bright Anukani. Because we need to attack and this is a, a boy who is good at passing, releasing the strikers and the, and the mid-wingers. Mid eh? So I would play Bright uh, in front of K0 and Gift Ali. Uh, then up front, Luanga will be the spearman. Balinya mm, had a good game then with either Poloto or Chigozi. Because I would say Serwada, nae, I'm not too sure that we are still having him, because rumors say, Alabi Kokuanga Yakozechi, Naya Genze. Sina Kaka Sane Wabao, Serwada Gwen Kubisa, with the Luanga and Valinya in a system of 4 3 3. I think the match will be a, a good one for us to score more goals. I see a 3 1. I see a 3-1 in this game and I see us going to the next round because that is where we belong. Era insuwe tuba tuzize kurumba mupira gwa febiri zero. Techidja kuba chivi tuli waka and we have whatever it takes to win the match. Well guys, we've heard it from the fans, a little hopeful. They know that KCCFC's chances of winning the start in Uganda Premier League this season are a little bit mild. But then they say the club has a chance in the Stanwick Uganda Cup this season and that means the club has got to win against Express Football Club at home on Friday. That game will be at 3.30 and uh, definitely will be back here on Sunday to tell you how everything unfolded uh, during that game. So, Thomas, you wind up. Um, first of all, your greatest KCCFC player. <laughs> My greatest KCCFC player is the greatest KCCFC player. Who? Philip Omondi. Why Philip Omondi? <laughs> he was a wizard. Yeah. He wasn't, he was out of this world. Um, um, I would think that uh, he was, I don't know if Moses, you had a chance to watch Ronaldinho. I, I did. That. Yes, yeah. um, you roll Ronaldinho into Riquelme. I mean, the slow motion geniuses. Yeah. He did everything. I mean, he would do anything with the ball. I mean, everything with the ball. Though he's not the player I love most at KCC. He's no, the most. greatest. And uh, the one I love most is, is was uh, the, the late uh, former life captain, Sam Senze. Mm. 
Mm. And all my jerseys I have at KCC are shirt 13, some same thing. Mm. Um, uh, why I loved Sam was that he was a versatile player. Mm. He would switch the left and right fullback positions and uh, he was a likable player at a personal level, like I told you when I joined KCC. I mean, I knew him at a personal level and, 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 and that is, but for me, in terms of the greatest, no doubt, Philip Mondi for me. Then the current generation, your best player, the players that are... Julius Poloto, without doubt. Poloto. One of the things I love about Julius, mm -hmm. to be honest with you, is that he's, I mean, this injury that he got really retarded his progress. Mm -hmm. That acceleration, that, I mean, the modern game needs that player. Mm -hmm. You get the ball, go forward, accelerate into the opposition box, then you can think when you're into the box. Mm -hmm. So for me, Julius takes it. Shout out Julius Poloto. I know you watch this show and uh, a senior like senior Tom Damudia <laughs> says you're his best player of this current generation. Just keep working hard. Uh, current assistant captain of KCCFC. Now as you wind up Tom, your parting shots and also your prediction ahead of KCCFC vs Express Football Club on Friday. Um, my parting shot is that um, I wish my, my young brother Mole was the best. Uh, I've known Mole for, for quite some, right from his uh, primary school days. Yeah. And, and, and uh, I wish him the best. I wish, I wish to see Mole at KCC as a manager a little bit longer. And, um, and uh, the parting shot is that the players should work hard. Um, there are so many opportunities out there. They, sh they need to, to look at their colleagues who have moved into professional football, the advantages they have got and, and what turns, out, that, that turns around your life. Because many of our players come from really disadvantaged backgrounds. So they just need to focus. Go a little, a little step further. Moses, my, during my time studying in the, in the western part of, 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 the, of the world, I saw so many players who looked average, especially from West Africa, staying at clubs and finally making it, yeah. as opposed to many East African players. That's another story I, I, I would share with you at, at, in detail. Yeah. So for me, I didn't see so much difference between them and us, but that will to go into, into a mid-winter training session around 10th, to, between, maybe between 10th, to, to, to 10th December to, to 5th January. Yep. I mean, you go into a training session, try to show that much as this is not the kind of weather I grew up in, but I can, I can, I can, I can keep and sustain that, that so that I can get so many other, I mean, I can get my life and most of the other people out of the of the of, of those quality situations they are in. For me, that's very important for the players, yeah. and 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 the, and the club as well. Then my prediction, wow. <laughs> I would like to KCC, I would like to see KCC win it two one. Two one. Yes. Well, thank you very much, Tom. It's been amazing having you on the KCCFC TV show, your first time here, and I will keep having you more and more here because we want to to share from your bottomless well of knowledge. Uh, and I should say thank you very much. He's had a very good one. That is senior Tom Damia. That's how I call him. And that's how most of us call him at the football club. Uh, a, a person that has supported the club from the 70s up until now. We've seen the worst and the best of the football club. And then his prediction ahead of that game next week on Friday. That is KCCFC vs Express Football Club. The second leg of the stand between Uganda Cup. He says KCCFC will progress 2-1. And I also think KCCFC will progress. I'll give my prediction here. And for me, it's a 1-0 win over... Uh, Express Football Club. So guys, that's been it for this week's show. We had a guest on the show, Mr. Tom Damulira, and he really covered two segments with us. Uh, quite a special one for this one. And we told you also that we had three players this week summoned for the national team. That is the senior Uganda Cranes team. And uh, that means that um, they will be participating in that friendly game against the Bafana Bafana later on next month in June. And the three players are Alukwago, Serada Steven, and Bright Anukani. So much we shared on the show tonight. Guys, we'll be back next week on Sunday uh, with episode 26, season 2 of the KCCFC TV show, where we'll have everything that transpired in that Stanley Uganda Cup game between KCCFC and Express Football Club. My name is Magero Moses Mwanje. Have a good night.